So today we're going to talk about a couple things. Abominations of those nations. Uh -huh. So he doesn't want you to to mimic the nations that, that you're coming in to uh, possess. Mm -hmm. Keep on there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, uh -huh. or that uses divination, divination uh -huh. or an observer of times, uh -huh. or an enchanter. Mm -hmm. Or a witch, All right. or a charmer, mm -hmm. or a consulter with familiar spirits, uh -huh. or a wizard, yes. or a necromancer. Necromancer, that's someone who talks to the dead. Mm -hmm. okay. Keep on For all that do these things mm -hmm. are an abomination unto the Lord. Yes, sir. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Uh -huh. Thou shalt be perfect. With the Lord thy God. Uh huh. So he's telling the whole nation of Israel to be perfect. So that just seems like something we can't do. I mean, everyone says that, you know, well, no one's perfect. But here in the book, the Lord is telling people to be perfect. And he's told the whole nation to be perfect. Yes. So we don't, we don't track this down and we don't okay. see what he's talking about here. Keep on reading. Okay. For these nations which thou shalt possess. Hearken unto the observers of time mm -hmm. and diviners, mm -hmm. but as for thee, the Lord thy God have not suffered thee so to do. Right, right. So they, these nations that he drove out, they listened to these uh, palm readers, you know, and these uh, people who could, you know, tell the future, you know, in the crystal ball. I don't know if they had crystal balls back then, but uh, <laughs> but uh, the, the, those kind of people. And so uh, let's track this down and find out what perfect is, if it is something. We know it's something because the Lord said it's something, but let's find out what the Lord said it is. So let's go on to uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 2. Let's 
First Corinthians 2. We're going to start at verse 1. Then we're going to skip on down. When you get to go ahead and read. And I, brother, mm -hmm. when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. Uh -huh. So this is Paul. And he said when he came to them, he didn't come, you know, with these grand, grandiose, you know, words and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. Uh -huh. All he did was tell them about Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. Skip on down to, uh, to the four. Uh -huh. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Uh huh. So he wasn't, you know, saying those smooth words that the scripture is talking about, you know. Okay. Go ahead. But in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Uh -huh. In demonstration of the spirit. The spirit here is the word, you know, and the power of it. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, mm -hmm. but in the power of God. Yes, sir. Yes. How bet we speak wisdom among them that are perfect? Oh, he said he's speaking wisdom among people that are perfect. Mm. And people say nobody can be perfect. Right. Let's keep on reading. Yet not the wisdom of this world, uh -huh. nor of the princes of this world, uh -huh. that come to naught. That come to naught. That come to nothing. So he's speaking among the people that are perfect. That's that's kind of uh, weird. I mean, if these people are perfect, man, they really don't need them to be speaking to them, you know? Right. But we're gonna find out what it actually means, you know? Because we really need to clear this up because I know when I first started looking into this thing, I was like, well, this, this can't be, you know? But the Lord said it, so it has to be. So it has to be here in these book, so we're going to take a look at it. So, we're going to go over the Psalms and uh, keep on investigating this. Psalms 37. We're going to start at verse 34. Psalms 37 and 34. Go ahead, read. Wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. And keep his way. And keep his way. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. Uh huh. So he's going to exalt exalt thee to inherit the land. Now, by the time in this, by the time the psalm was wrote, they had already inherited the land. So what land is he talking about inheriting? He's talking about inheriting the whole earth. Mm -hmm. But uh, because that's what the meek shall inherit. They shall inherit the earth. But keep on reading. When the wicked are cut off, thou shall see it. Mm -hmm. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Uh -huh. We see that today. Yes. The wicked are in power and they are everywhere. They 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 have power and have sway over us in, in every distinguishable way. Especially here in America. Keep on. Yet he passed away mm -hmm. and lo, he was not. Mm -hmm. Yea, I saw him, but he could not be found. Uh -huh. Mark the perfect man. Mark the perfect man. And behold the upright. Uh -huh. For the end of that man is peace. So, Amen. we know that being perfect, the end of being perfect is peace. Yes, sir. Right? But he said, mark the perfect man. We still don't know what actually a man does to be perfect. And we're going to keep on uh, in here. We're going to find that out. So let's let's go back to the beginning. And let's look at some of the people who, who were with God in the beginning. So let's go back to Genesis 6. And we're going to read one verse here. 6 and 9. We get to Genesis 6 and 9. Go ahead. Read. These are the generations of Noah. Uh -huh. Noah was a just man. Uh -huh. And perfect in his generation. Perfect in his generation. So Noah was perfect. Yeah. We we see uh, uh, the Lord told Abraham to be perfect. Yes. And we still know that He told the the nation of Israel to be perfect. Right. Yes, sir. So there's a pattern going on here. He's telling the people yes, who follow Him to be perfect. Yes. Now how can we do that? Because nobody's perfect. Right. So let's go ahead and finish. And Noah walked with God. Walked with God. So let's look at at somebody else. It's a, one of the biggest stories, well, one of the most well-known stories, the story of Job. 
and we're going to look at Job. Because if anybody was doing the right thing, it was this guy. Yes, sir. Because the Lord had him tested uh, thoroughly. Yes. And I don't, I don't even think I could withstand a test like that. Mm -hmm. Let's start at Job 1, and we're going to start at verse 1. Okay. Job chapter 1, and verse 1. Go ahead, read. There was a man in the land of us mm -hmm. whose name was Job. Yes, sir. And that man was perfect and upright. That man was perfect and upright. Mm -hmm. and, and one that feared God uh -huh. and issued evil. Uh huh. He issued evil. So he hated evil. Yes, sir. So th this guy, Job, was perfect and he hated evil. But one of the other things was that he feared God. Amen. So let's, uh, let's get on down to six and let's read a little bit more about it. Mm -hmm. Now there was a day mm -hmm. when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Satan came also among them. Right, right. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Satan, as thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man. He said it again. He said he's a perfect and upright man. All right. Yes, sir. One that feareth God and escheweth evil. Yes, he hated evil. All right. Let's just, just keep on reading about this guy because we want to see exactly what Job was doing in order to be perfect and upright before okay. God. So okay. we're going to go on to chapter 2. Mm -hmm. We're going to Chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 1. Okay. When you get there, go ahead. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, mm -hmm. and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Uh -huh. Because he had to, because he has to do what the Lord says. Yes. Contrary to popular belief, he's not, you know, in control of things, and he's not doing what he wants to do. He's only doing the things that God allowed him to do. Okay. So he had, so when, when the Lord called for his sons to come and present themselves, he had to come and present himself too. And the Lord said unto Satan, uh -huh. From whence comest thou? Mm -hmm. And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect uh -huh. and upright man. He said there's none like him in the earth, a perfect mm -hmm. and upright man. Mm -hmm. One that feareth God and escheweth evil, mm -hmm. and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Uh -huh. Although thou moved against him to destroy him without cause. Right, right, right. So the Lord, the, the first time uh, the Lord asked Satan to consider his servant Job, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Satan said, you know, uh, yeah. you know, if you took your heads from around him, you know, I could, he would crush you to your face. Mm -hmm. And the Lord allowed him to mess with Job, and Job didn't crack. That's right. Amen. So let's read some more about this guy and see what he was doing. Let's, let's go to Job 9. We're going to start at verse 1. Job 9 and 1. Go ahead. Then Job answered mm -hmm. and said, I know it is of a truth, but how should man be just with God? Uh huh. So he knows it is of a truth, but how should man be just with God? Mm -hmm. If he will contend with him, mm -hmm. he can then answer him one of a thousand. Uh huh. So if he talks with God, he can't answer one of God's questions. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. If I justify myself, mine own mouth. I'm sorry. That was skipping. Uh, I had to skip on down to okay. twenty. Okay. Yeah, verse twenty. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. If I justify myself, mine own mouth shall condemn me. Mm -hmm. If I say I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. Uh -huh. So. He's not saying that he's perfect. The Lord is saying that he's perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's not qualifying himself. The Lord is qualifying him. Mm -hmm. Though I were perfect, uh -huh. 
yet would I not know my soul? I would despise my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So though he was perfect, because he knew he was perfect. Mm -hmm. But Job didn't consider himself perfect. You know, even though the Lord said he was perfect and upright, he didn't consider himself perfect. Let's see why. Well, why did he? Let's go over to 1 John. Let's look at something. 1 John chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 8. 1 John chapter 1. Verse 8. Okay. Go ahead. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Aha. Uh -huh. So if we say that we have we don't have any sin, we deceive ourselves. Yes. And the truth is not in us. Right. right. Keep on reading. If we confess our sins, mm -hmm. he is faithful mm -hmm. and just to forgive us our sins mm -hmm. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh -huh. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now we know that all have sinned, right? Mm -hmm. And come short. Right. Right. So we know that Job, since he's part of the all, has sin and come from. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's the reason why he didn't consider himself perfect. Mm -hmm. Because he has seen, you know. But the Lord called him perfect. So how can you be perfect and be a sinner or have seen? Mm -hmm. So let's go back and let's look at some of the people uh, well some of the kings of Israel. So let's go back to Second Chronicles. And we're going to look at some of the things that was happening back there. Second Chronicles chapter 16. How can you be a sinner and be perfect? Second Chronicles 16. We're going to start at verse 7. Second Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 7. And at that time... Mm -hmm. Hanani, uh -huh. the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, Asa, king, Asa, mm -hmm. king of Judah, mm -hmm. and said unto him, mm -hmm. Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, uh -huh. and not relied on the Lord thy God, uh -huh. therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Uh -huh. So he was, Asa was relying on the king of Syria and not on the Lord. Right. Keep on reading. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubims a huge host mm -hmm. with very many chariots and horsemen? Mm -hmm. Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them unto thy hand. Uh -huh. So when we went up against the Ethiopians and the Lubims, you know, they had a, a large army. But because we trusted in the Lord, we was able to defeat them. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth mm -hmm. to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Uh -huh, whose heart is perfect toward him. Uh -huh. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. He said, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. And Asa was one of the good kings. He was actually one of the good kings of Israel. And because he relied not on the Lord, the Lord made uh, the rest of his kingship, you know, uh, really uh, tumultuous. Mm -hmm. But he said, that uh, uh, he, he shows himself strong in behalf of those whose heart is perfect before him. Yeah. Now we know heart, the heart is just a, a blood pump. And when, it, when the Bible speaks about the heart, it's being of your mind. Right. So let's keep on reading about some of these kings. Let's go to First Chronicles, chapter 12. First Chronicles, chapter 12. And 23. First Chronicles 12 and 23. Go ahead and read. And these are the numbers of the bands that were ready to armed 
to the war and came to David to Hebron to turn the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of the Lord. Uh -huh. So these were uh, the numbers of the guys who David had who was going to fight with him to, to uh, turn the kingdom over to him. All right. The children of Judah that bear shield and spear were 6,800 ready armed to the war. Uh -huh. Skip down to verse 38. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. All these men of war uh -huh. that could keep rank uh -huh. came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make with a perfect heart mm -hmm. to Hebron. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Keep on reading. To make David king over all Israel. Uh -huh. And all the rest also of Israel were of one heart uh -huh. to make David king. Of one heart. So they had a perfect heart to uh that was uh directed towards keeping the Lord's what the Lord's uh, will in mm -hmm. making David king over Israel. Mm -hmm. And all of the people have one heart, meaning they all have one mind, or they all was thinking the same thing. Yes, sir. Let's find out, man, what this is. Let's go to Chronicles 28. First Chronicles, yes, 28. So all these fighting men that David had, they were all, that our heart was perfect towards getting David to his goals that the Lord had uh, put him in charge of Israel. So let's, let's go to 1 Chronicles 28, and we're going to start at 9. Actually, we're just going to read that one verse. Go ahead, read 9. And thou, Solomon, my son. Uh -huh. So this is Solomon. This is, now Solomon is this king. Go ahead. Know thou the God of thy father, mm -hmm. and serve him with a perfect heart. Uh -huh. So now he's telling Solomon to serve God like, serve God with a perfect heart, like his father. Mm -hmm. And with a willing mind. Aha, uh -huh. so a perfect heart equals a willing mind. Keep on going. For the Lord searcheth all hearts, uh -huh. and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. Mm -hmm. If thou seek him, mm -hmm. he will be found of thee. Mm -hmm. But if thou forsake him, mm -hmm. he will be cast, he will cast thee off forever. Uh -huh. So we see here that he told Solomon to walk perfect before him with the willingness of mind. Mm -hmm. So let's let's try to find out what actually a willingness of mind is, because well before we do that, let's let's look at let's look at one of the other things. Uh, let's go to First Chronicles 29. Okay. We're going to start at 1. Okay. Go ahead. Furthermore, David, the king said unto all the congregation, mm -hmm. Solomon, my son, whom alone God hath chosen, uh -huh. is yet young and tender, mm -hmm. and the work is great, for the palace is not for man, right. but for the Lord God. All right. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for things to be made of gold, mm -hmm. and the silver for things of silver, right. and the brass for things of brass, mm -hmm. the iron for things of iron, mm -hmm. and wood for the things of wood, right. on stones and stones to be set, right. glistering stones, and of divers colors, and all manner of precious stones, and marble stones in abundance. Right, so David didn't get to build the uh, temple, but he got he got the, all the stuff for Solomon to build it. He he really got busy. He got all the gold, he got all the jewels and everything. You know? mm -hmm. He was gonna set them up to when he was ready, when this thing was ready to be built, it was gonna be magnificent. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Keep on reading. Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, mm -hmm. I have of my own proper gold of gold and silver. Mm -hmm which I have given to the house of my God mm -hmm. over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house. Yeah, so he knew that he can't take his gold with him. Yeah. So he said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, and on top of the stuff that I gathered, I'm going to give the, the, the gold and money that I have towards the house. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Even 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, mm -hmm. 
and seven thousand talents of the refined silver to overlay the walls of the house with all. The gold for things of gold and the silver for things of silver and for all manner of work to be made by the hands of the artificers. Mm -hmm. And who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? Uh -huh. Who is willing, has a willing mind. So he gave over his gold and all of, or all of his money willingly. Yeah. Keep on reading. Then the chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and hundreds with the rulers of the king's work offered willingly. Offered willingly. So this is the willingness of the mind. Mm -hmm. Keep on and gave for the service of the house of God of gold 5,000 talents and 10,000 drowns and silver 10,000 talents mm -hmm. and of brass 18,000 talents mm -hmm. and 100,000 talents of iron. Ooh, uh -huh. And they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jehiel, the Gershonite. Uh-huh, so people, people who were there even though they weren't part of the building, if they had precious stones or something, they gave them to the building of the Lord's house. Yes, sir. Keep on reading. Then the people rejoiced, for that they offered willingly. Willingly, uh-huh. Because with perfect heart, perfect heart uh -huh. they offered willingly yes, sir. to the Lord. Uh -huh. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Right, so yes, they sir. did the Lord's will willingly. Yes, it's kind of kind of like when when I first started teaching, I wasn't really willing to teach. I kind of avoided it as much as I could, you know. But the Lord found a way to put me in front of people. Uh, but I wasn't willing back then, you know. But uh, now he, He's found a willing heart in me. Hopefully, uh, that I can please Him. God is good. All right. Let's get down to nineteen. Read nineteen. Okay. And get and gave and give unto Solomon, my son, a perfect heart uh -huh. to keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, and thy statutes. Uh -huh. A perfect heart to keep his commandments and his statutes, yes, and testimonies, uh -huh. and to do all these things, and to build the palace for the which I have made provision. Uh -huh. So this was David saying a prayer for uh, Solomon, and he said, you know. Uh, I want you to give Solomon a perfect heart to keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. So not only are th is it a willing mind, but the willing mind also has to be doing something. Mm -hmm. So we don't look at that a little bit. Let's go to 1 Kings 11. Everybody was giving over there. Everybody willingly. Mm -hmm. Let the first Kings 11 and 1 first Kings chapter 11 verse 1 we get there go ahead but King Solomon loved many strange women I ah, see it's always going after strange women that, that, that Israel gets in trouble <laughs> Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, mm -hmm. women of the Moabites, mm -hmm. Ammonites, Edomites, mm -hmm. Zidonians, mm -hmm. and Hittites. Uh -huh. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into them, mm -hmm. neither shall they come in unto you. Right. For surely they shall turn away your heart uh -huh. after their gods. Uh -huh. Turn away your heart after other gods. So at this point... Uh, he wasn't having, you know, if they turn away your heart, you don't have a perfect heart now. Yeah. Right, right. Keep on. Solomon clave unto these in love. Uh huh. And he had 700 wives, <coughs> princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. Oh, man. He had <laughs> 700 wives. <laughs> and one is a little bit too much for me. <laughs> he had 700. But they, what they did was they turned his heart or his mind away from the yes, Lord. Yes. Or in King oh, right. For it came to pass mm -hmm. when Solomon was old uh -huh. that his wives turned his heart away after other gods mm -hmm. and his heart was not perfect. And his heart was not perfect. So they turned him away here so he 
wasn't keeping the commandments yes. and keeping the statutes and the testimonies of the Lord. Uh huh. They turned his heart away from uh, those things, and so his heart was not perfect then. With the Lord his God, mm -hmm. as was in the heart of his David, fa uh -huh. of his father David. Mm -hmm. So, if you have a perfect heart, you can have a not perfect heart. Mm -hmm. And the way your heart is not perfect is turning away from the Lord. Right. So he turned away from his his uh, his laws, his statutes, his testimonies. Allowed these women to uh, worship uh, pagan gods in the land, set up altars for them in groves, and uh, and his heart was turned away. Therefore, he was no longer perfect in the eyes of the Lord. Let's go to First Kings fifteen and twelve. First Kings fifteen. We're gonna start at. Verse 1. First Kings chapter 15 and verse 1. Let me there, go ahead and read. Now, in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, uh -huh. the son of Nebat reigned Abijam mm -hmm. over Judah. So, Abijam reigned over Judah. He was the, the second king uh, of Judah after the split came. Because after Solomon uh, died, the, the king was split into Judah and Israel. And so uh, he was the, uh, Abijam, Abijam was the second king over the, the Judah. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and his mother's name was Machai, mm -hmm. the daughter of Abishalom. Absalom. Mm -hmm. Absalom. And he walked in the sins of his father. Uh -oh which he had done before him, mm -hmm. and his heart was not perfect uh -huh. with the Lord his God uh -huh. as the heart of David his father. Uh -huh. So he walked in his sins, he walked in the sins of his father. And what sin? Transgression of the law. So he walked in the sins, or he broke the law, or the Lord's statutes and uh, testimonies. And uh, so the Lord considered his heart not perfect like his father David, just like Solomon was turned away from the law in, in his old age. Let's skip on down to nine. I'm going to read. Okay. And in the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, reigned Asa over Judah. Mm -hmm. And 40 and one years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Makkah, mm -hmm. the daughter of Absalom. Mm -hmm. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father. Uh -huh. So Asa did what was right in the eyes mm -hmm. of the Lord. Uh -huh. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land, uh -huh. and removed all the idols that his father had made. Uh -huh. And also Makkah, his mother, even her, he removed from being queen. Because he, she had made an idol in a grove, uh -huh. and Asa destroyed her idol and burnt it by the brook of Kidron. Uh -huh. So Asa did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Right. He, uh, when he, when he came to reign, he, he took away all the sodomites out of the land, so all the, the the sexual impropriety that was in the land, and he took away all the the, the churches of these uh, pagan gods. He took them out of the land, the groves and things of this nature. And he even removed uh, Makai's, uh, his mother, from being queen because she was worshiping idols. Mm -hmm. yes. right. okay. But the high places were not removed. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. Uh -huh. So his heart was perfect because he had a willing mind to do yes. the things of the Lord. Yes, sir. But even though he didn't take, take away the high places, he should have actually removed Remove those things too, too you know. Okay. But okay. still, I guess there was nobody worshiping at them. He didn't allow them to worship at, at those places, you know. So he didn't destroy them. But uh, he was perfect though, because he had a willing mind to do the things of the Lord, or to keep His laws and His statutes and His testimonies. Amen. All right. Let's go to Second Kings. Second Kings, chapter twenty. We're looking at these guys. Some were good. Some, well, most most were bad kings, man. And actually, if you read, I, I got this chart of, of the kings of, of Israel, and um, and it, and it goes through, you know, all of the the, uh, the the kings of Judah and all the kings of Israel, and uh, 
and it tells you whether they were a good king or a bad king. And good kings were the ones who kept the laws and the statutes. And, right. and man, it was just like bad, 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 bad. Wow. <laughs> what are these guys doing, man? Mm. 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 Second Kings chapter 20. We're going to start at verse 1. Chapter, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. Go ahead, Rick. In those days, Hezekiah sick unto death, mm -hmm. and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thy house in order, mm -hmm. for thou shalt die and not live. Uh -huh. Hezekiah was like, uh, he was the 13th king of Judah. Okay. All right. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, mm -hmm. I beseech thee, O Lord, mm -hmm. remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. Uh -huh. In truth and with a perfect heart. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And have done that which is good in thy sight. Uh -huh. And Hezekiah wept sore. Mm -hmm. So Hezekiah said, you know, when the Lord told him, said, get your house in order because... You're gonna die soon, you know. He he pleaded with the Lord. And I think actually if I remember this story correct, the Lord gave him gave him a little more time because yeah, he died. Uh -huh. yeah. But that was because his heart was perfect before the Lord, because he did willingly the things of the Lord, which is his commandments, his statutes, and his testimonies. So let's go back one more time and let's look at uh, another king. And let's let's go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 25. Not back, actually, forward. Second Chronicles 25. Yes. We're going to start at verse 1. 25 and 1. Let me get there, go ahead. Amaziah mm -hmm. was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign. All right. And he reigned 20 and 9 years in Jerusalem. All right. And his mother's name was Johadan of Jerusalem. All right. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, mm -hmm. but not with a perfect heart. But not with a perfect heart. Mm -hmm. So he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Mm -hmm. So here we have someone who was keeping the commandments, who was um, uh, keeping the statutes and the testimonies of the Lord, but it wasn't with a willing mind. And without the willing mind, you can't be perfect before the Lord. Right. Okay. 14. Go ahead and read verse 3. Now it came to pass when the kingdom was established to him that he slew his servants that had killed the king, his father. Uh -huh. So let's, let's skip on down 14. Okay. Now it came to pass after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites uh -huh. that he brought the gods of the children of Seir oh, man. Mm -hmm. and set them up to be his gods uh -huh. and bowed down himself before them and burned incense unto them. Mm -hmm. So we see that the willingness of your heart really brings forth the keeping of the commandments and the statutes. He was the other way around. He kept the commandments because maybe that's what he did from his youth. But once, uh, but his his head wasn't in it. His heart wasn't in it. Mm -hmm. And so he willingly didn't do these things. Just like some of our kids don't willingly do what we want them to do. You know, they they do it because we told them to do it. Right. You know, and when they get a chance to, they go outside of what we told them to do and they go ahead and do this. And that's what he did. So right. once he became king. You know, he said, forget what the Lord said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring, these, bring these idols back. I'm going to worship these idols and so on. Like so not only did he not have a perfect heart, but now he wasn't, he didn't do what was right inside of the Lord. Right. So let's further investigate this. Let's, let's go to Psalm 110. Psalm 110. Oh, I'm sorry. 101. See, I'm old now. <laughs> Psalm 101. I can't read. <laughs> Psalm 101. We're going to 
start at one. Go ahead, read. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. Mm -hmm. I will behave myself wisely in the perfect way. Uh -huh. Oh, when thou come unto me, mm -hmm. I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Uh huh. This is David now that, right. that wrote this song. Keep on reading. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Uh -huh. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Uh huh. So he hates the the thing. Uh, no, he will set no wicked thing before his eyes, meaning an idol or something like that. Keep on reading. A forward heart shall depart from me. Uh huh. I will not know a wicked person. Mm -hmm. Whoso privately slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Uh -huh. Him that have a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. Right, right. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, faithful. that they may dwell with me. Mm -hmm. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Uh -huh. So him that walketh in a perfect way, in a perfect way, meaning doing what's right, doing what's good in the sight of the Lord, and with a willing heart. Amen. And that creates perfection. Let's keep on. Let's go over to 2 Timothy and get a better grasp on it. Second Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to start at 16, chapter 3, and 16. Whatever. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Uh -huh. how, how much scripture is given by inspiration? All. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And is profitable for the doctrine, uh -huh. for reproof, uh -huh. for correction, uh -huh. for instruction in righteousness. For instruction in righteousness. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is for and is profitable for doctrine. For reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. Uh -huh. That the man of God uh -huh. may be perfect. Uh -huh. So that he may be perfect. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Unto all good works. So all the good works that the Lord wants us to do is written in this book. Mm -hmm. And so when when I, I have a lesson too about good, good versus evil. And we'll talk about that. What is actually good? what's actually evil because people think um, good is just you know giving to the poor and helping people yeah, yeah. Move, move out the house and stuff like that you know? and that stuff is good it's but good. there's a little more than good and there's right. a little more than evil than that okay but uh so we see that scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it's for doctrine for correction and instruction and in righteousness that we might walk perfect before the Lord all right and do all his good works. So let's go to Matthew and let's see what the master had to say about this thing. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 17. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. 5. And 17. Go ahead, read. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, this is out of Jesus' own mouth. He said he has not come to destroy the law or the prophets. He's, he's, a, he's, come, he's not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And to fulfill what? The things that are written about him in the scripture. Go ahead, read. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or tittle of a, a tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Till how much be fulfilled? All. And all. has all been fulfilled? No. No, 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 no. So we see that he said that until the heavens and the earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle shall pass from the law. Whoso, whosoever therefore 
shall break one of these least commandments mm -hmm. and shall teach men so, mm -hmm. he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. We know the least of the kingdom of heaven is the lake of fire. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we hear preachers talking about, well, Bowie talked about a preacher who was reading this and he was like, well, at least I'll be the least in the kingdom, you know. <laughs> But he didn't understand that. No one is so good. No one is Keep on reading. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So, Jesus himself said, Who keeps the commandments and his laws and teaches them shall be great. And who doesn't shall be the least in the kingdom. That's pretty straightforward. I don't know why these people. These churches don't don't get that. You know, this is out of Jesus' own mouth. Right. Keep on reading. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, mm -hmm. ye shall in no cause enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. So your righteousness had to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. And the Pharisees and the and the scribes, they were pretty knowledgeable about the law. Yeah. You know, they they Kept the law, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they did it with a willing mind. Right. right. Keep on reading. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, mm -hmm. and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Right. Thou shalt not kill. Mm -hmm. That's the commandment. Yes, right. Right. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause uh -huh. shall be in danger of the judgment. <laughs> and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the counsel. Uh -huh. But whosoever shall say, shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Uh -huh. So he said, he tightened, Jesus not only told us about the law, but he actually tightened it up a little. Yeah, yeah. So that you know, mm -hmm. there's going to be no wiggling out of this thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So he said, you know, even when you think in this, you know, you're going to be in danger of judgment. Yeah. It's funny. He said, but whoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Mm -hmm. And um, I tell you, one, one, in high school, I went, I spent a night over one of my guys' house. Well, no, I called my guy's house. And his mom was a Baptist church going lady mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And at that time, it was a lot of uh, West Coast rap and West Coast movies that came out. And you know, out there, they, you know, they call each other fool. What up, fool? Mm -hmm. And so, I had called his house. And I was like, and his mom answered the phone. I was like, hey, how you doing, uh, Ms. Black? She was like, oh, I'm doing fine. I was like, hey, can I speak to her now? She was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, he's around? She was like, yeah. I was like, well, put that fool on. And she snapped on me. Oh. Don't you be calling him a fool? I was like, I, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right. But, you know, I, every time I read this, I think about it, you know. Right. But I wasn't calling him a fool. That's right. just how we talk to him, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, it's crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's get down to 27. <laughs> Let's keep on reading. <laughs> Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh-huh, that's said. This is said of them of new time, too. <laughs> <laughs> but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Amen. Jesus is putting a stranglehold on us so that yes, uh, yes. there will be no uh, wiggle room for us. We, we, mm -hmm. Not that we have to be without error, but uh, our uh, attempts uh, have to be really willing. You know, we have to, right. be, have, to have this willing heart. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Ye have heard that it have been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Oh, I'm sorry, that's 43. You, you skip down 43, I should tell. We down on 43, I'm sorry. Start at 43 again. Okay. Ye have heard that it have been said, mm -hmm. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I said unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, uh -huh. and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, when Jesus was saying this, he said, 
ye have heard that it's been said. He, you notice he didn't say it, it's been written. And it said, you know, hate your love your love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Because even back then he was saying love uh, uh, the Egyptian and love the Edomite, you know, for their your brothers, you know. Mm -hmm. So he said, you heard that, you know, it's uh, love love your neighbor and hate your enemies, you know. But I tell you that, you know, to bless your enemies, you know, bless those that curse you. Keep on reading. Mm -hmm. That ye may be the children of your father, mm -hmm. which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, mm -hmm. and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. All right. For if we love them which love you, what reward have you? Mm -hmm. Do not even the publicans the same? Right. He said, if you love somebody that loves you, what really, what really are you doing? I mean, even people that are evil or people that do wrong, you know, love their mothers and love their, you know, siblings and stuff like that, you know? So what are you doing different than they're doing, you know? And that's loving your enemy, you know? And I have been at fault at that. Uh, many a times. Keep on. And if ye salute your brethren only, mm -hmm. what do ye more than others? Do not even the public insult? Mm -hmm. Be ye therefore perfect, uh -huh. even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Uh -huh. Be ye therefore. So now he's talking to us now. Mm -hmm. Well, he was talking to them, but he's talking to us now. Be ye perfect, mm -hmm. even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Mm -hmm. So Jesus took the laws off the stones and put it into your mind that you may be children of your Father and be perfect. So he took the laws and put them in your mind and kind of strengthened them so that those laws will be in your mind so that you can be perfect because that is one of the criteria of being a perfect and upright man. Amen. Man woman. So let's go over to Romans and pursue this a little more. Romans chapter 7. And 14. Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. Let me get there, go ahead. For we know that the law is spiritual. Uh, the law is spiritual. Mm -hmm. But I am carnal, sold under sin. Right. For that which I do, I will allow not. Mm -hmm. For what I do, well, for that I would, that do I not. Mm -hmm. But what I hate, that do I. Uh -huh. So he said that what he wants to do, you know, he can't find it in him to do. But the, the stuff that he hates, he finds himself doing. Right. Keep on reading. If then I do that which I would not, mm -hmm. I consent unto the law that is in good. Mm -hmm. Now when, now then is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Uh -huh. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, right. dwelleth no good thing. Uh -huh. Then Jesus said the same thing when, when the man came and asked him, uh, Master, what good, uh, good master, what good thing shall I uh, do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, why callest thou me good? Mm -hmm. he, called, he was talking about his flesh at that time, just like Paul was talking about his flesh. Mm -hmm. Dwelleth no good thing for to will is present with me, mm -hmm. but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Uh -huh. So he has a willing heart, mm -hmm. you know, but somehow his body is going in another direction, man. Right. He, can't, he can't seem to, 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 to get it ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the good that I would, I do not. Mm -hmm. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Uh -huh. So he said the good stuff uh, that I want to do, you know, I find myself not doing it, but the, the evil that, you know, I don't want to do, I find myself doing that stuff. Keep on reading. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Mm -hmm. I find then a law that when I would do good, uh -huh. evil is present with me. Uh -huh. This flesh is evil. Mm -hmm. And not that it's, you know, a monster or anything, but it's a monster to us because yes, it is. we have to get it under subjection, and that is uh, something that we all struggle with. Mm -hmm. Keep on. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Uh, so Paul delights after the law of God, after his inward man or his 
heart. Mm -hmm. But I see another law in my members, mm -hmm. warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Mm -hmm. Oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So with Paul, with his mind, he serves the law of God, but the flesh, he serves the law of sin. So, But he delights in the law after the inner man, or with the mind. So we see that uh, just like uh, the kings of old, in order for perfection to come, we have to have uh, not only keeping the laws and the statutes and testimonies, but our mind also has to be willing. We have to have a willing heart. Amen. And that is one, I think, one of the hardest things to get people to understand. Let's go back to Psalms. We're going to go to Psalms 40. delight to do thy will. Uh -huh. he, uh, they were delighted to do the will, just like Paul delighted to do the will. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, mm -hmm. yea, thy law is within my heart. Thy law is within his heart, just like <laughs> the law is within Paul's mind that he delights after doing. Mm -hmm. The mind and the heart is the same thing. So if David had law, God's law in his mind, in his heart, and Paul had the law in his mind, in his heart. Let's go to John, St. John, chapter 4. St. <coughs> John, chapter 4. We'll start at 23. Okay. We, always, we can always go back to Jesus and see what he did or what he said. And they were always set us straight. So we, if we, even if we go into Paul stuff and we don't understand what Paul was talking about, if we stick a pen over here at Jesus and we come back and, and look at what he said, it, it should set us straight. Set us straight. Amen. John chapter 4, and then verse 23. Go ahead and read. Okay. But the hour coming, mm -hmm. and now is... When the true worshipers mm -hmm. shall worship the Father in spirit uh -huh. and in truth. In spirit. Uh -huh. That's in your mind. Mm -hmm. And in truth. Uh -huh. For the Father seeketh to worship such to worship him. Because uh -huh. that's what he's looking for. He's looking for people who, who not only keep the commandments mm -hmm. and statutes and testimonies, but also have a willing mind. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's right. Go ahead. God is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh -huh. So you must worship him. It's not, there, there wasn't a, a, a say, well, you, you might have to do that or, you know, you could possibly do that. He said you must worship him mm -hmm. in spirit and in truth. Amen. So let's roll over Romans and, and kind of see what he's talking about here. So Romans 2. I have a few more scriptures, but I'm going to try to roll through them pretty quickly. Okay. Romans 2. Yeah. Romans 2 and 28. I'm going to start at 28. Romans chapter 2 and verse 28. Go ahead, read. For he is not a Jew, Jew mm -hmm. which is one outwardly, mm -hmm. neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. Uh -huh. So here he was talking about the Gentiles and how they uh, keep the, the commandments. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, mm -hmm. and circumcision is that of the heart, uh -huh. in the spirit, mm -hmm. and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, uh -huh. but of God. 
Mm -hmm. And Paul was talking about these Gentiles who, with no uh, 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 knowledge of God, was doing the things that were right in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's like, these people, you know, were, are not like us. They're not, you know, their, their circumcision is not of the flesh, it's of their mind. But we know that uh, that's the same thing that Moses was saying way back in the day about the circumcision of the heart. Or the mind. Right. So let's flip over to Philippians and look at it. Philippians 3. We're going to start at verse 1. Philippians 3 and 1. Go ahead. Finally, my brother. Rejoice in the Lord mm -hmm. to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, mm -hmm. but for you, it is safe. Uh -huh. Beware of dogs. All right. Beware of evil workers. Uh -huh. Beware of the concision. The concision yes. For we are the circumcision uh -huh. which worship God in the spirit. Uh -huh. You worship God in the spirit or with your mind. Uh -huh. And rejoice in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And have no confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. You shouldn't have any confidence in your flesh because at any given moment it's going to betray you. Right. <laughs> have you. Have you doing stuff you don't want to do. Amen. Just like Paul was talking about. Just like he said. <laughs> Let's go over to Romans now. Back over to Romans. And we're going to go to Romans 8. God in the spirit. Amen. All right, let's see. Romans 8 and 5. Let me get that for you. Okay. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Mm -hmm. But they that are after the spirit uh -huh. <laughs> the things of the spirit. Uh -huh. so, so they that are after the flesh do the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit do the things of the spirit. Or the mind or the word of God. They that are after the word of God do the things of the word of God. Uh -huh. For to be carnally minded is death. Uh -huh. Carnally minded or fleshly minded is death. Mm -hmm. right. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Uh -huh. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, uh -huh. for it is not subject to the law of God. Right. Neither indeed can be. So the carnal mind is not subject to the law of God. Mm -hmm. It hates the law of God. So we see here, and this is backing up everything that we just that we've read so far, that it said that uh, to do the things that are good in the, the sight of the Lord is to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his testimony. And the thing and, and to make you perfect, you have to have a willing mind to do those things. Amen. Let's flip over to Ephesians 4. Let's check out some things there. Sometimes I hate, well, I don't hate, but sometimes I don't like reading at Paul because he's so misunderstood. Ephesians 4. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1. Chapter 4 and 1. When you get there, go ahead. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, mm -hmm. Beseech ye that walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Uh -huh. So Paul is telling them, you know, walk the walk. <coughs> walk the walk. Let's get down to 13. Mm -hmm. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Uh -huh. To the unity of the faith. Remember all those uh, troops that were uh, had a perfect heart mm -hmm. for to fight for David to make him king? Mm -hmm. they, they had the unity of faith. They believed right. the Lord. To, to make David king, and they all had a perfect heart towards that goal. So he says, till we all come in the unity of that faith. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Keep on reading. Okay. <coughs> middle, middle okay. 
and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Uh -huh, unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Uh -huh. So the, the, the unity of faith brings forth the perfect man uh -huh, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. Let's skip down 17. This I say therefore uh -huh. and testify in the Lord that he henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk mm -hmm. in the vanity of their mind. Uh -huh. So don't do like these other Gentiles who walk after their own thinking and after their own hearts. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Skip down to 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Uh -huh. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Mm -hmm. So here we see the spirit or the heart is your mind. And you be renewed in that by keeping his commandments or his laws and his statutes. So we don't walk after the vanity of our own mind. We walk about what thus we walk about what thus said the Lord. Amen. Amen. And when we do that, and we do that willingly, Amen. we yes. become perfect, or we have a perfect heart, or we are a perfect person Amen. in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Let's go back to Genesis and let's look at something really quick. Genesis 6. I gotta tell you, this was interesting when I when I read about this. Genesis 6, we're going to start at 1, Genesis 6, and 1, go ahead. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, mm -hmm. and daughters was born unto them, uh -huh. that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, mm -hmm. and they took their wives of all which they choose. Uh -huh. Sons of God were the uh, offspring of Seth, mm -hmm. and the daughters of men were the offspring of Cain. Okay. Keep on reading. And the Lord said, mm -hmm. My spirit shall not always strive with man. Uh -huh. His spirit shall not always strive with man. Uh -huh. For that he is also his flesh, uh -huh. and yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Mm -hmm. So his spirit is not going to always strive with man. So let's go and look at it. Let's, let's see what Jesus had to say about it. Let's go to Matthew 26. Sorry, what did you say? Matthew 26. And we're going to start at 36. 26, Matthew 26. And 36. This is... 36. Mm -hmm. This is when, when Jesus got to the garden, Yosemite, after the Passover uh, meal, and he was waiting for them to, he was waiting for, for, for prophecy to come, come back. So uh, let's start at 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, mm -hmm. and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Uh -huh. So he got there with the disciples. He said, you guys chill here while I go and pray by myself. Mm -hmm. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee mm -hmm. and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. All right. So he took Peter and two of his sons and two sons of Zebedee with him. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and then, go ahead. Sorry. then saith he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Mm -hmm. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And so he said, stay here and watch me, though. Mm -hmm. And he went a little farther mm -hmm. and fell on his face and prayed, mm -hmm. saying, Oh, my father, uh -huh. if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. So he said, let this cup pass from me. So this is Jesus uh, flesh getting the better of, mm -hmm. saying, you know, he didn't want to die, you know, but he was willing to die because he said, not my will, but your will. So he has a willing heart here in order to fulfill the word of God. Keep on. And he cometh unto the disciples mm -hmm. and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What? 
Could he not watch with me one hour? One hour. Those guys was sleep. I guess they had too much wine after that. Mm -hmm. Pass over. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Mm -hmm. The spirit indeed is willing, mm -hmm. but the flesh is weak. Uh huh. The spirit is indeed willing, or the willing mind. The mind is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. So. We see here that these guys, the Lord called perfect, and he asked a lot of people to walk perfect before him, and it can be done. Walking perfect is doing things which is good in the sight of the Lord, which is his commandments, his statutes, and his testimonies, with a willing mind or a willing heart, and that's how you become perfect. But that is not the only way you become perfect, and uh, there is a different kind of perfect that is here in the scripture also. Well, let's take a look at that. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to start at verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9. 13. And nine. Let me get there. Go ahead. Read. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. We don't know everything, you know. Go ahead. But then, but when that which is perfect is come. Uh, wait a minute. We were just talking about being perfect, right? But he's talking about a perfect that is to come. So mm -hmm. us being perfect here is still not the ultimate perfection. So there's another level to this perfection thing. So let's take let's, let's read a little bit more. Then that which is in part shall be done away with. Mm -hmm. That's uh, 12. Skip down 12, yeah. For now we see through a glass, mm -hmm. darkly, but then face to face. Mm -hmm. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Uh -huh. So he says that this perfection is to come. And we don't really get it right now, but when we get it, we're going to know all. Mm -hmm. So let's let's look a little bit further into this perfection and see what it really is. Let's go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to start at verse 1. Hebrews 11 and 1. When you get there, go ahead. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, uh -huh. for the evidence of things not seen. Uh -huh. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Uh -huh. So the elders, or the, the, our ancestors, got a good report. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. seven. Go ahead, uh, skip down to seven. By faith, mm -hmm. Noah being warned of God, uh, of God, of things not yet, not seen as yet, mm -hmm. moved with fear. Mm -hmm. Prepared by an ark to the saving of his house, right. by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Uh -huh. So he was willing. He believed first, mm -hmm. and he kept looking to the Lord's statutes and laws and, mm -hmm. and testimonies. Mm -hmm. And uh, but he was willing, and he believed, uh -huh. and he was able to save his whole household. Amen. Mm -hmm. Keep on reading. By faith, mm -hmm. Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place. Which he should, after receive for an inheritance, obey. Uh -huh. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. Uh -huh. So he was willing also. He went out. Uh, and we saw in the last lesson that I had that Abraham uh, kept law, statutes, and testimonies of the Lord also. Mm -hmm. So, and But he had a willing mind. And he stepped out <laughs> and did what the Lord said. He obeyed. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise. Mm -hmm. As in a strange country, yes, sir. dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of him of the same promise. Uh -huh. So he believed, you know, he had faith. He believed. Mm -hmm. Skip down to 32. Okay. And what shall I more say? Mm -hmm. For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak mm -hmm. and of Samson and of Jephthah. And of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. Mm -hmm. Who through. Okay, go down 36. Okay. 
and others had trial of cruel mockings uh -huh. and scourgings, yeah. yet moreover of bonds and imprisonment. So all these people who he's talking about, you know, had trials and tribulations, but they kept the laws, the statutes, and the testimonies, the mm -hmm. commandments, and they had a willing heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's get down to 39. And these all, mm -hmm. having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Uh -huh. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So these people are going to be made perfect. Are we, are, the scripture already said that they're going to be made perfect. But they can't be made perfect without us. Mm -hmm. So what is this perfection? That he's talking about here. Let's, let's look a little bit more. Let's go into Hebrews 12. We're going to start at verse 1. Next chapter, 12. We're going to start at 1. Go ahead. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, mm -hmm. let us lay aside every weight mm -hmm. and the sin which does so easily beset us. Yes, sir. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Oh, so everybody... Yeah. Everybody, even in the Christian churches, they talk about running this race. Right. You know, right. they really don't understand what race they're running. Though, right. but man, okay. keep on reading. Looking unto Jesus, uh -huh. the author and finisher of our faith. Uh -huh. So he's the author of our faith. Mm -hmm. He's the finisher of our faith. So what's going to be the end of this thing? Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Mm -hmm. So we should look to Jesus for the finishing. Or whatever it is, however Jesus ended up, we should be looking towards that end too. Mm -hmm. Let's get down to 18. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, mm -hmm. and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. Mm -hmm. We're not coming to that mount. 22. Mm -hmm. Skip down 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion. Mount Zion. Uh huh. And unto the city of the living God. Now that's Jerusalem. The heavenly Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And to an innumerable, innumerable company of angels. Uh huh. So that's heaven. That's the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. so about here. To the general assembly mm -hmm. and church of the firstborn. The church of the firstborn. Which are written in heaven. Uh -huh. And to God the judge of all. And to the spirits of just men. Made perfect. Ah just men made perfect. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a remaking. Of this perfect man. Into a more perfect man. Mm -hmm. You know. So these just men. Will be made perfect. Mm -hmm. let's, um, let's go back. To Hebrews 5. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 5. Let me start at verse 6. Hebrews 5, verse 6. Clary. As he said also in another place, mm -hmm. thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Uh -huh. He's talking about Jesus here. Is a priest after the order of Melchizedek forever. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Who in the days of his flesh, uh -huh. when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death. Uh -huh. So we read about that. He was in the garden and he was uh, uh, weak, you know, flesh, you know, but he said, Lord, not, not my will, but your will, Lord. So he was willing. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And was heard in that he feared. Mm -hmm. Though he was a son, yet learned the obedience by the things which he suffered. Uh -huh. And being made perfect, being made perfect, uh -huh. he became the author of eternal salvation unto all men that obey uh -huh. him. So the author and the finisher of our faith. And his finish became being made perfect. Right? Amen. Amen. Eternal salvation. Let's, let's really look at that. Let's go over to uh, Luke chapter 13. So eternal salvation, that's eternal life. Yes. Luke chapter 13. We got a few more scriptures. Luke 13. Verse 4. 
13, and we're going to start at verse 31, Luke 13 and 31. Go ahead. The same day where came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. So they were talking to Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They said, Get out, because Herod will kill thee. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. Go and tell that fox. Go ahead and tell Herod that fox. Uh -huh. Behold, I cast out devils, mm -hmm. and I do cure today and tomorrow, mm -hmm. and the third day I shall be perfected. Uh huh. So Jesus was to be in the grave three days and three nights. And he mm -hmm. said, After that, he shall be made perfect. So that's the perfect that he's talking about when he comes up out of the grave, and that's being raised from the dead. That's it. Eternal life. Amen. The, the, read 33. 33. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is talking about when he is being raised from the dead. Now he is the first one, or the firstborn. Mm -hmm. Let's about that. Let's see about that. Let's go to Matthew 19. Did I skip one there? Oh, I'm sorry. Luke, Luke 9. Before we go to Matthew, let's go to Luke 9. Thank you, brother. Luke 9. Where are we going to start at 21? And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing. Mm -hmm. Saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and the scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And be raised the third day. So he said when, he, when he's going to be raised that he's going to be made perfect. Mm -hmm. So let's Check that out. Let's go to Luke 9 now. I'm sorry, we just did mean that. I'm sorry, Philippians, Philippians. I'm getting ahead of me. Philippians. Philippians 3. We're going to start at 10. Philippians 3 and 10. That I may know him mm -hmm. and the power of his resurrection. And whose resurrection? That's Jesus' resurrection. Mm -hmm. The power and, of his resurrection. Uh -huh. And the fellowship of his sufferings mm -hmm. being made conformable unto his death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Mm -hmm. So he, Paul is talking about he is looking forward to being raised from the dead or the resurrection. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. read it. Not as though I had already attained. Uh -huh. So he's not saved yet. Mm -hmm. you know. Either were already perfect, uh -huh. but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ uh -huh. Jesus. So he said that he's not, he, he's not already perfect. But he was perfect, actually, because he was perfect because he had a willing heart Amen. to do things of the Lord. But he wasn't perfect in that he wasn't perfect in the way Jesus was perfect, who was being raised from the dead into eternal life. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Matthews and let's mm -hmm. kind of sum this thing up. Let's go to Matthew 19. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, mm -hmm. 
What good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Uh -huh. So this guy came to Jesus and he said, good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? We talked about that earlier. Keep on going. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? Uh -huh. There is none good but one. That is God. And he said that because he was in the flesh. And he, mm -hmm. Paul told us that there's nothing good in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if thou would enter into life, mm -hmm. keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Keep on reading. He saith unto him, mm -hmm. which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not steal. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Mm -hmm. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So he gives them the rundown. We talked about that the, the last lesson that I had. We, we went through all these, and we went to show that all these were in the Ten Commandments, except for this last one, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We went outside of the Ten Commandments just to show that, you know, the law is the law, and that, you know, it's just not the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. you know? We keep on reading. The young man said unto him, mm -hmm. All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yeah. yet? Mm -hmm. So he said, I, I did these things. I, mm -hmm. I've been doing these things since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. But remember, uh, what king was that? Remember the king who, who came and he was doing, he, he was doing uh, what was good in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But he it's didn't have a willing heart. Yeah. Yeah. So he was not perfect in the sight right. of the Lord. Yes. Keep on reading. Jesus said unto him, mm -hmm. If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell thou have what thou hast, mm -hmm. and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Aha. Uh -huh. So here we go. He said, well, I've been doing all that stuff since the youth. I've been keeping the commandments. He's like, all right, well, if you really want to do this thing, mm -hmm. well, sell all your stuff, and, and come on with me. Mm -hmm. And what did, and what happened? But when the young man heard that saying, mm -hmm. he went away sorrowful. But he had great possessions. Mm -hmm. So he showed him not only was he he didn't uh, he hadn't been keeping the commandments since mm -hmm. he was a youth because uh, uh, money was first on his list mm -hmm. and, uh, and so he held that in esteem over God. Amen. Not only that, but he didn't have a willing mind mm -hmm. to follow Jesus, so mm -hmm. he couldn't attain it. But right. keep on reading. Then said Jesus unto his disciples. Mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. And again I say unto you, it is easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of, heaven, of God. Now, when I used to read this, I used to be like, so you can't be rich? You know? And this is just a side note. When I, when I, when I, when I thought about this, I was like, well, a rich man can't get into heaven, so what about all these rich guys who was back here, you know, in, in, in the book, you know, Noah and all these guys, they had, you know, they were pretty rich, you know, these guys won't be getting into heaven, and so I, I just realized that it's it's not actually being rich that doesn't get you into heaven, it's uh, the, the money takes you away from doing uh, the commandments of the Lord, Amen. Amen. Keep, keep your eye on other things, mm -hmm. and so then, you know, back in the day, a poor man, when he sinned, he had to kill one of his calves, right? Yes. So if you was a rich man back then, you had an abundance of cattle. Yeah. You know, you would kill a cow and be like, ah, I would go sin, I kill a cow, that's it, mm -hmm. you know, I'm cool. But if you was poor, <laughs> and you didn't have that many cattle to, to kill or the, the many animals to kill, you kind of were on a righteousness path all the time because you couldn't make a mistake because you didn't have anything to, to kill right. to, to take away your sin. Right. That's why he was always saying that the poor shall inherit the earth and they always talk about the poor and the meek and stuff like that because they were more on a righteous path because they, you know, they had to be. Right. You know, they, they, right. they couldn't afford to, to, to be sin. Right, right. 25. Yeah, 25. Mm -hmm. Keep on going. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? <laughs> Who can be saved then? <laughs> but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Mm -hmm. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all 
and follow thee. What shall we have therefore? All right, so that's a, that's a pretty, you know, decent question, I guess. You know, he's like, well, we've done it. Mm -hmm. we, we sold all our stuff. We, we kept the commandments from our youth, and we followed you willing. You know, what what we going to get? All right. Let's see what he said. And Jesus said unto them, mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration. The, the regeneration, when, that's the, the, the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, mm -hmm. ye also shall sit upon twelve th thrones, mm -hmm. judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So he said, when we get done with this, when I get on my throne, you guys are going to be in thrones judging the tribes of Israel. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Keep on. And every one that have forsaken houses, uh -huh. or brethren, uh -huh. or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, uh -huh. or children, or lands, for my name's uh -huh. sake, shall receive a hundredfold, uh -huh. and shall inherit the everlasting life. Everlasting life. That is the perfection that he was talking about. Mm -hmm. So that is the next perfection, after mm -hmm. being having a perfect mind or a perfect heart towards the Lord. Amen. So we say enter into life or, or have eternal life or to be perfect as Jesus is perfect is to enter into the kingdom of God and be saved or uh, have e inherit eternal life or everlasting life. Mm -hmm. So I said only Jesus has attained the, the real perfection or the ultimate perfection. Uh, but the best any of us can do uh, right now is what Abraham uh Noah, Job, David, Hezekiah, and even Paul did. So let's go to Philippians. And we got two more. Let's go to Philippians 3. Philippians 3, and we're going to start at 15. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Mm -hmm. So he has not apprehended or he has not attained what he's been looking for or what he's been trying to. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I press toward the mark mm -hmm. for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. All right. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect. Uh huh. So many of us perfect people. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Be thus minded. Be thus minded or per perfectly hearted. Mm -hmm. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, mm -hmm. God shall reveal even this unto you. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to the last place. And this is uh, 1 Kings 8. So he said, let us that be perfect, be perfect minded, that we may attain the ultimate perfection, which is everlasting life. Amen. Let's go to 1 Kings. This is the last place. 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 8. Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. He arose from before the altar of the Lord from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. Mm -hmm. So we, remember when he was, he was, uh, oh, this is Solomon's prayer. Go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, mm -hmm. saying, Blessed be the Lord that have given rest unto his people Israel mm -hmm. according to all that he promised. All right. 
There have not failed one word of all his good promise, uh -huh. which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. Uh -huh. So the Lord kept his end of the bargain. He walked them into the land, gave them everything they need, and they set up the kingdom, and everything was good. The Lord our God be with us. Mm -hmm. And as he's, he was with our fathers, mm -hmm. let him not leave us, nor forsake us. Yes, sir. Go ahead. That he may incline our hearts unto him. Uh-huh. To walk in all his ways. Walk in his ways. And to keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. And his statutes. His statutes and his judgments. His judgments. Which he commanded our fathers. Yes, sir. And let these, my words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night. Uh -huh. That he maintain the cause of his servant uh -huh. and the cause of his people Israel right. at all times. At all times. Okay. As the matter shall require. Right. That we, when we need you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Uh -huh. Let your heart therefore be perfect. Let your heart therefore be perfect. With the Lord our God. Uh -huh. To walk in his statutes. To walk in his statutes. And to keep his commandments as at this day. Uh-huh. Amen. So perfection is something that we can attain. Yes. 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 It is something, even though we sin, we saw, because Paul said he sinned, but he was still counted as perfect. Mm-hmm. Amen. Being perfect is keeping the Lord's God, keeping the Lord God commandments, his statutes, his testimonies, his commandments with a willing mind yes. that we may attain the ultimate perfection, which is eternal life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, you guys got some uh, instruction today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.